Welcome back to my garage. You might notice I'm in my civilian clothes. That's because this is just a short video, I think. I felt the need to make a quick video because I, I've i had a brilliant slash stupid, super stupid, the most brilliant slash stupid idea, I think. I think it's brilliant. First up, a huge thanks to everybody who has been donating and my new and old patrons and everybody watching. I'm here because of you, so thank you. It really means a lot. Second, so a little bit of context here. We, uh, I've been talking about doing a, let me show you the blower while talking. This is my Rotrex centrifugal supercharger. This is the, pretty much the smallest one you can get. They used to make a even smaller one, but it's uh, out of production and they didn't have the parts on their shelves to couple together one for me. But uh, anyways, thanks. So a huge thanks to Rotrex. There's a couple of years ago I've got, I got this and started uh, experimenting with it. All of that experimentation was with the blower on the wrong side of the surge line. And that's our uh, problem here. We uh, so this can produce uh, like close to two bars of uh, overpressure, relative pressure. So uh, pressure differential of two, almost like 1.8 or something, from the inlet to the outlet. But it can't do that without pushing far too much air for my engine to ingest. So we'll have to do something with that uh, excessive air. Otherwise it'll be on the wrong side of the surge line. A simple solution is just to dump out the excessive air. And uh, that's why the, on a tangent here, that's why my, uh, on this uh, pressure test bench the MAF sensor is here and not before the blower. That's because well, if we test at uh, smaller port openings, then it'll definitely go outside of its range. And, uh, and to prevent surge, we have to dump out air after the outlet of the compressor and measure. But still, we want to measure how much airflow there's uh, going through the engine. And that's why this is here, not before the compressor, the MAF sensor. Because I need to measure how much is going through the engine, not how much is being pushed through the compressor itself. In a running setup, we'll have to, if, if, like, we'd have to run two of these to measure, uh, well, uh, no, we wouldn't. Then we could run it on the inlet and just dump out, when, so it, it's not in surge. Tangent. Where was I? Yeah, so dumping out that air, but really inefficient, like, because it'll produce, uh, much more air than we can use and then so we'll just throw like throw out lots of uh, lots of energy and um, yeah no not a good idea then there's the compounding idea with a like a co single compressor compound setup and uh, strangely enough I've spent lots of time thinking about it or at least multiple times where I've thought about it some and uh, I've never really come to a conclusion about if it's possible or not but uh, as many people have uh, pointed out in the comments and uh, and as I've actually realized myself too it is impossible it's it sounds impossible and it is impossible so the whole thing my whole idea was to pipe like a t-section and then pipe the the excess air outlet back in in front of the supercharger and have a reed valve from atmosphere so that uh, so that as long as they're like so that we can build pressure before the blower but if you think about it in that way there would always be higher pressure if we could build any pressure at all it would just be circulating the air and uh, and there will, would always be higher pressure in that plenum versus atmospheric so it would never ingest new air it would just circulate and heat up the existing existing air so yeah of course it won't work oh i uh, bought this uh hunking big uh, intercooler and some fans for it for uh for cooling down the air in that compound setup uh, so this isn't really necessary at the moment but uh, i think it'll come in handy for uh, for testing later but uh <laughs> we've got this so there's also the the possibility to uh, use a different blower. This is a, a Roots blower, AMR 300. Am I recording? Yeah. The problem with this is that it's uh, 
it's actually perfect for for this application because it's a uh, because it pushes uh, a constant uh, volume every rotation so uh, so it would, would make the engine much easier to start this will be an, a problematic engine to start uh, I think with uh, the setup I'm imagining but uh, the problem with this is how inefficient they are and especially at higher pressures they're not meant to push uh, to create much pressure at all and become extremely inefficient at higher pressure so and we need really high pressure like uh, I don't think two bar is enough so that's already a problem with that lower if it if it were to create uh, like if it could run with uh, it didn't have to have that all that airflow still it it wouldn't produce as much pressure compression as I think I want of course I want lots of compression and that's where the brilliant slash stupid idea comes in so I picked up this and this is for illustration purposes thank you to Pedersen Racing for uh, donating this uh, this uh, it's a it might be leaking oil but maybe not but uh, still it's uh, far too big for my application here but for illustration purposes and maybe some testing so the plan the plan is to pipe so first the first plan was to pipe the outlet from the compressor into the turbine housing of the of the turbo so drive the turbo, not from exhaust gases, but from the compressor. Because that compressor is producing much higher volume of air versus the, the exhaust from, from this small engine. So that my, was my first uh, idea. So first might be the best idea, but first idea. But then I was thinking, how, maybe we could uh, extract some more energy out of the flow from that compressor. And then... So stupid, the stupid slash uh, brilliant idea got even brillianter slash stupider. What if we create a turbo jet out of the compressor and the exhaust housing of a turbo, and that will power this, the tur the compressor housing of the of the turbo, and this is piped into the engine. Imagine this is a combustion chamber now of a turbo, like a turbo jet combustion chamber, just a. Uh, Turbo jet in uh, YouTube to uh, see what I'm talking about. Combustion chamber, and then this combustion chamber is piped into here, like you would uh, see on a typical turbo jet. But it, the, but this turbo jet is not driven by the compressor of the turbo itself. It's uh, driven by the by that compressor, which is driven by the engine. And the uh, outlet here is piped into the engine. And in this way, we can uh, first of all we can. Uh, we can size this so that, well, first of all, we'll have to get a really special turbo made or found. I don't think they're in their X. A, a really special turbo where the exhaust housing is uh, sized to the flow from the supercharger and uh, with a combustion chamber. And uh, like designed so that we have uh, can run the compressor at, uh, at the perfect speed for efficiency. And then so size that for that and then size the compressor housing this needs to be sized so that we can create really really high pressure but uh, but not too much airflow to get it into surge so like five hopefully like four or five bars of pressure differential from the four or five a, a pressure differential of four to five or four or five something inlet to outlet and uh, and not create too much airflow or not need to flow too much so that it's in surge. <laughs> <coughs> this is the rambliest ramble video ever, but I think you get my idea here. And uh, and we the thing is like that the compressor itself won't be happy over like 1.8 bars of pressure and airflow at that point is far too high to put it like pump it into here and create that pressure yeah um, i saw a, a turbo compressor housing that can pump like like imagine uh, 250 cc so that would be four bars of pressure like um, 
compressed into 50cc, 250cc compressed into 50cc. That would be 4, wouldn't it? 50, 100 is uh, 1, 150, 2, yeah. So that means we need a, a compressor housing on the turbo that can flow like 250cc of air every, like at 15,000 RPM, say, and, uh, and create and, and hold like four bars of pressure. So if we can, uh, if we can get something sized to do that, I know there's turbos capable of that high, those high pressures. I think they're big ones for marine stuff, but uh, it should be possible to get something made that's small enough. And now it doesn't have to be, as long as it can create really, really high pressure, it doesn't have to be like 50cc small. It can be two, 250cc small, as long as it's capable of holding that high of a pressure. And so in this way, it's, it's kind of inefficient, but we're kind of taking that, ta making use of the inefficiency by uh, creating much higher airflow for driving a turbo that then versus what the engine can do in itself kind of cheating having a second combustion chamber and we can also mount an afterburner here and uh, I'm not sure how the Bonneville rule book will, uh, will look upon I don't think there's any rules about uh, about setting fire to your exhaust so there will be some trust produced <laughs> Okay, I just had to make this uh, rambling uh, video because I think this idea is brilliant. I don't think it's stupid, I think it's brilliant. And I think it's really cool having a turbo jet driving the compressor for the engine. And even cooler that there's a, a centrifugal supercharging driving a turbo jet compressing air for the engine. <laughs> I'm gonna try to not be as free jazz and uh, so we're gonna do the flow testing now on this and uh, see if we can get it to flow enough air for for the what we want or and do modifications if it can't. I think we're gonna do away with this and have a better flow system. And uh, yeah, so so this the video is this compressor centrifugal compressor driven. Turbo jet compressor for the engine. Okay, see you next time. <laughs>